Hey guys, this is John the Chronic Gamer, and today we are reviewing Sleeping Dogs for the PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, and PC. So, this is my first review, and I'm going to take a minute to just ask that you guys comment and uh, suggest, you know, things that you'd like to see improved on, or, you know, comment on things that you'd like in my review so I can keep doing more of it, you know, just anything. Anything will help me <laughs> to make these reviews get better and better. You know, I know my production value is not the best, but, you know, I'm slowly learning a lot of stuff. But I think the content's really what matters anyway. So let's just dive in. So today we have Sleeping Dogs. It's an open-world action game similar to games like Grand Theft Auto and Saints Row the Third. It was originally titled Black Lotus, and in 2009 was officially announced as True Crime Hong Kong. This would have been the, the third installment in the True Crime series, as well as a reboot with the new developer, United Front Games. They were founded in 2007 and responsible for such games as Mod Nation Racers, and they are currently making Little Big Planet Karting. Activision pulled the plug on the True Crime series due to increasing production costs and delays associated with the game. True Crime Hong Kong was thus cancelled. Six months later, Square Enix purchased the publishing rights, and uh, they resurrected the game under the new name, Sleeping Dogs. So, here we are today. <laughs> this game is rated M for violence, drug use, sex, and all that other fucking good stuff that we all love. So... Story and upgrade system. Sleeping Dogs uses a Hong Kong style action movie theme as a setting for its story. For those of you familiar with Chow Yun Fat and movies like Hard Boiled, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. The game uses highly stylized martial arts, fancy gunplay, trick driving, lots of slow motion, and free running, all delivered in a beautifully rendered city called San Paro. In Sleeping Dogs, the player controls Wei Shen, an undercover cop with ties to America and Hong Kong. Shen is responsible to uphold the law and gather intel on the triads, all while maintaining his undercover status. Its story is easily the game's best feature, filled with stellar voice acting, plot twists, and excitement. Shen has to make key decisions regarding his involvement with the triad and his cop identity. These, de these decisions become increasingly blurry and more complicated the deeper he dives into the triad. The in-game voices are actually a mix of English and Cantonese, and it's pretty cool because it really adds to the uh, realism and atmosphere of the game. Sleeping Dogs has an interesting leveling mechanic, in which the player is awarded points for achieving certain stats during missions. There are five categories Wei can upgrade in. Cop, Triad, Melee, Face, and Health. In order to achieve points for cop upgrades, Wei is not allowed to use violence against civilians, cops, or damaged property. Doing so will result in lower mission level points towards your cop upgrade. You can also gain COP upgrade points by doing case file missions for the Hong Kong PD. Triad points are awarded for finishing off en enemies in interesting ways, such as environmental finishers and by completing Triad story missions. Melee attacks are upgraded when you find any of the 15 jade statues that are strewn about the city. You merely find one and bring it to the gym and <laughs> he trains you in an attack. Face upgrades which are actually pretty cool. They're based off your popularity. I'll explain it later. When you hit a certain level, you may unlock a face upgrade. You can also gain face by doing favors for civilians. Health upgrades, the very last category, are required by finding health shrines littered throughout the city. Similar to the jade statues, but they're a little harder to find and there's more of them. So controls and gameplay. Controls for sleeping dogs are similar to any other open world action game you may have played. If you really played any open world game, you should pick up the controls fairly quickly. Because, um, first of all, driving, fighting, and shooting all feel wonderful in this game, and it's almost a natural extension of your own body. <laughs> fighting is also extremely rewarding, and it's surprisingly simple. It does, however, begin to wear out pretty quickly. Fans of the GTA series will know that open world sandbox games like these usually have a terrible fighting mechanic. Sleeping Dogs is an exception. Feels like a mix between Batman Arkham City and Assassin's Creed. You can counter, throw, grapple, and melee attack. Using these in different ways yields different results. The use of your environment is also important to your success in fighting. 
Slamming a security gate on someone or smashing their face into a van is a violent, albeit satisfying, way to dispatch enemies. And you're also rewarded triad points for uh, these types of actions. Driving. <clears throat> you know, driving was uh, very awkward at first. I didn't like it. The cars felt overly responsive and heavy. It, it, it was hard, it's hard to explain. It's an odd feeling. It's kind of like Mod Nation Racers, actually. It was like driving a cart. But the more time I spent in the car, the more fun I had driving. Before I knew it, I was weaving through traffic, executing power slides with great ease. The sense of speed is pretty good. It could feel a bit faster, though. And there is a car bashing ability present, you know, which is pretty new for these types of games. You could press square and uh, bash in a direction or at a pursuer, causing your pursuer to crash on the slow motion display reminiscent of burnout. The shooting mechanic is done in a classic Hong Kong style. It's very, a, it's a very clean experience and a blast to do. There are big shootouts, lots of explosions, and destructible environments. Find whatever weapon you can and unleash a barrage of bullets, then dive for safety. The use of free running is especially helpful, allowing you to jump, dive, duck, and dodge incoming fire. Wei actually does not have any inventory uh, system of any kind. So weapon acquired during fights or out and about must either be dropped or stored in the trunk of your car. So you're not gonna have like, you know, a pocket full of guns like in GTA or Saints Row. So you gotta pick and choose carefully. The camera system is actually, yeah, pretty, uh, has a tendency to get stuck on objects and obscure your vision, but other than that, it's decent. Sleeping Dogs does not have multiplayer, but does have online leaderboards, trophies, and stat sharing. So under the biggest flaw in this game, I believe, the mission system. In this otherwise fantastic game, <laughs> doing missions in this game just aren't much fun. They aren't boring either, they are simply just standard in the 15 to 20 hours I played. The mission types have all been done before and I felt the creativity and excitement just wasn't there. Fetch and carry, escort, perfect driving, or beating someone up made up the majority of missions. You know, shooting. Saints Row the Third had so many off-the-wall and exciting missions that I don't think this game can compete. There's also a complete lack of shooting anything for the first seven hours. It's mostly you driving from place to place, beating people up, and watching a cutscene. By hour five, I was itching like a crackhead for a gun to shoot. By pressing in the left joystick, you can change your current objective, and a GPS line will lead you to your current mission. To gain access to missions, stats, etc., you need to bust out your trusty cell phone. The cell phone has become a mainstay in sa sandbox games since GTA 4. Case files are given to you by the HKPD, Hong Kong P Police Department, and usually have you tracking a person of interest to the police. Favor missions, raise your face, and favors can include beating someone up, collecting money, or just doing something nice for someone. A higher face level allows you to wear nicer clothing and gain new upgrades. Triad missions advance the storyline and provide you insight to the Sonon Yi. That is a triad in which you are, you know, breaching. And all these missions can be replayed for extra cash. So, environment. As reported by United Front Games, the city in Sleeping Dogs is, actual, is an actual portrayal of real world Hong Kong. That is not necessarily true, but most major landmarks and districts are there. The city itself does a wonderful job of transporting you to a foreign land, and driving on the left side of the road does take getting used to. Trust me on that one. The city folk speak in Cantonese, react to your presence, and go about their daily lives, and this includes fighting each other. And trash blows about in the city. San Paro truly feels alive and breathing. So in closing, I have truly nothing bad to say about Sleeping Dogs. It's a great game and it should have garnered more attention than it did. The game is slick, it's difficult, and offers plenty of things to do and see, like cockfighting or singing karaoke. I wish there were more varied mission types, but the sheer amount of things to do make up for the lack of originality. I like to keep busy in these types of games, with little downtime. The start of the game I did feel there was too much downtime, but once it ramps up, it doesn't let you go. Last thing, avoid cops at all costs. They are deadly. Deadly. And do yourself a favor, pick this game up. I'm gonna give this an 8 out of 10. Alright? 8 out of fucking 10. So, that was my first review, guys. This is John the Crowning Gamer, and stay tuned for my next review. Hope you guys like it. See ya. Smoke them if you got them.